As I sat there on the plush stool, draped in layers of pink satin, my mind whirled with a mix of nervous excitement and embarrassment. The soft rustle of the dress and the unfamiliar sensation of stockings tugging at my thighs were oddly thrilling yet deeply unsettling. Around me, the three women, each distinct in her demeanor and dress, buzzed with a kind of jubilant energy. Look at his panties, cooed one of the women, her voice a lilting mix of amusement and approval. Her hands expertly adjusted the frills around my waist, ensuring every layer of the petticoat was perfectly in place. Her green dress and matching apron, reminiscent of a maid's uniform, seemed both ironic and fitting given the situation. You're going to be lovely, dear, another chimed in, her tone gentle, almost motherly. She stood to my left, her attire more conservative, her spectacles slightly fogging as she beamed down at me. The pearls around her neck clinked softly, a sound I found surprisingly comforting. The third woman, the one holding a pink dress in front of me, had a sharper edge to her voice. Must I always wear girls' clothes now, miss? I found myself asking, my voice cracking slightly, betraying my inner turmoil. Yes, of course, boy, she replied briskly, her gaze firm and unyielding as she looked me over. Her own outfit was sleek and professional, a stark contrast to the frills and flounces that surrounded me. Each woman seemed to have a specific role in this transformation, a ritual that felt both imposed and chosen. As they fussed over me, clipping, tucking, and smoothing, I couldn't help but feel like a doll, a canvas for their feminine ideals. Yet, beneath the layers of silk and satin, a peculiar sense of identity began to stir. Was this merely a costume, or was it a revelation of a part of myself I had never dared to explore? The room was filled with their soft laughter and the clinking of their accessories, a symphony that both daunted and guided me into this new persona. As I looked at my reflection, the boy I knew was still there, but he was sharing his space with this new, delicate creature they were delighted to create. As the women continued their work, transforming every inch of me, their enthusiasm grew, and so did my immersion into this new identity. Each layer added, each adjustment made, seemed to pull me deeper into the role of a sissy baby girl, a persona both foreign and intriguing. One of the women, the one with the soft, motherly voice, began to drape a baby pink bib around my neck. Now, every lovely girl needs to keep her dress tidy, she said with a wink, securing the bib with a gentle touch. Her hands were warm, her touch reassuring, and it made me feel oddly secure and cared for. The room was filled with a soft, powdery scent, a mixture of talcum and perfume that seemed to seal my transformation. Another woman, the one in the maid's outfit, brought over a pair of glossy, white Mary Jane shoes. These will complete the look, darling, she murmured as she slipped them onto my feet, her fingers deft and practiced. The fit was snug, the shoes impossibly feminine with their shiny buckles gleaming under the room's soft lighting. The woman in the professional attire approached with a final touch, a small, delicate tiara. Every sissy baby girl needs her crown, she declared, placing it carefully atop my head. The tiara was light, but it bore the weight of my new identity, pressing the reality of my transformation firmly into consciousness. As they stepped back to admire their work, I caught my reflection in the mirror. The person staring back was me, but not just me. I was dressed extravagantly in layers of lace and satin, my hair styled in soft curls that framed my face, and my cheeks dusted with a pale pink blush that highlighted a shy, tentative smile. Isn't she just adorable? The maid said, clapping her hands lightly, her eyes twinkling with a mixture of pride and mischief. The women circled around me, their eyes appraising and yet kind, filled with an affection that was both commanding and nurturing. They spoke to me in soft, cooing voices, reinforcing my new role, guiding me gently into behaving, moving, and even thinking like the sissy baby girl they envisioned. In this moment, enveloped in their creation, the outside world with its expectations and rules seemed distant. Here, I was not just playing a part, I was exploring an aspect of myself that had been silent, unacknowledged. With each flutter of lace, each twinkle of the tiara, I felt less like I was being made into something else, and more like I was discovering a hidden dimension of my own identity. This was not just a game of dress up, it was a journey into vulnerability and expression, a tender exploration of self through the eyes and hands of those who saw something in me I had yet to see in myself.